Welcome to the Dose of Izzy talk show. I'm your host, Izzy Davis, fascinated by all things health, wellness, mindfulness, spirituality, and anything that can deepen our experience as human beings and make us better people. Today's guest is none other than my father, Bob Davis. I feel like on my show, I want to find the edges that people have ask them questions that make them slightly uncomfortable, and then just see what happens and how people can open up. But my dad just did that to me this entire episode. Some of the things he said, I was just sitting there flabbergasted. Like when I asked him to sit down and do this episode with me, he thought I wanted to borrow money and he makes several jokes about that. If you don't get out of this episode, how to better manage your anxiety or insomnia, you'll at least feel good and get a laugh. So without further ado, here's my father, Bob Davis. Hi. We don't actually need to look at the camera because oh, okay. they... Uh can't see us probably unless they're watching it on YouTube then they can see us oh but it's not so much oh will you play us a yeah. introductory well I was hoping I could they were watching me they are. you don't realize how much I need you love you all the time and never leave you Please come on back and see Just what you mean to me I need you Amazing. You know, I was actually going to ask you not to sing, but then oh. your singing was so good. Oh, stop it. You've really improved. <laughs> well, it's like when you let the monkey mind go and you stop be letting it be the leader. Mm -hmm. So let me explain to you what I do. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a belief. I think uh, it came from this sort of idea that you look around and you realize the planets are like billions of years old and our body has trillions and trillions and trillions of pieces inside us moving around at the speed of light, all in perfect unison. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, how come I don't feel that? You know, how come that accepted miracle of life is not really in my sense, essence? So um, I started thinking, I started seeing all, and this idea I think is the most powerful idea on the planet. I didn't make it up. It's around, a lot of people call it different things, non-duality, there's a lot of Hindu names, but the idea is <clears throat> we're not in charge of our mind, but we think we are. Mm -hmm. And that goof, that middle area that we think we're in charge of our mind, but we're not, is where I think all the crazy shit happens to us, where we start- The suffering. The suffering and the- edginess and the stress and you know not getting along with people and just all this nonsense we make up and I don't want to bad mouth the brain or the monkey mind whatever we want to call it that's nature's way of protecting us keeping us safe making us successful it's just that we have to sort of now shift a little bit and recognize our mind for the real gift it is Mm -hmm. It's not us, but it is a phenomenal gift. Mm -hmm. So MOBA is a practice, not a belief, and it's all about the experience of this thing that I'm going to talk about. And when people say practice, I feel like that usually means something you have to sit down and do or it's built into your day, but I think what you're Mine saying... Mine is more of a practice of living in the real world. It's not sitting around meditating and trying to get enlightened. That's not what we're talking about. I don't even know anything really about that. What MOBA is, is using the monkey mind, watching for it and having the experience of catching the monkey mind going off like and we do it, you know, oh, I got to get gas. That person only likes me because I bought him lunch. I shouldn't have paid that much for that shirt. I wish that person would, uh, you know, we, and then we analyze everything. Oh, that, if I, three feet this way, I would have done that. We 
categorize everything. It's just our brain working. And again, what I think gets us in trouble and doesn't have us experience the miracle of life is that we have bought in totally that we are thinking these thoughts. My feelings is it's more like we have this biological electrical computer in our brain and its job is to just look around all the time and see what we can fix, what we can worry about, what we can analyze, what we can categorize, what we can stop, what we can start, something sort of wrong. That's our nervous system is looking around. Looking for danger. Looking for danger and opportunity and all that. That's just the, so MOBA is the experience of recognizing that and recognizing it's a gift, just the way it is. That's nature at a certain level reminding us not to buy into it. I know it's a sort of a flip of a situation. So MOBA for me would be my daughter comes over and wants to talk and I think, oh my God, the little brat wants to borrow money. <laughs> you know, what should I do? And if she asked me for 5000 I guess I could give her 1000 I could tell her I, I should make up this shit like I got a car payment or something. Right? So, you know, that's just the human beingness of us that we all have these bizarre or common thoughts. And most people are so, uh, you know, have got such a great coping skill, mm -hmm. so they don't even notice it. But for me, there's a big payoff to go along my daily, and I probably do it once every minute. Mm -hmm. I'll have a little thought like, oh, you know, that record sounds flat or this, that, I wish it was sunnier, you know, that was one, Earlier today, I was going to play golf, and it started raining. And I, oh, yeah, life's crap. I, you know. Oh yeah. I mean, today I was driving yeah. from from L.A., and I, uh, I thought I should. Uh, it, it told me there was a shorter route, save you six minutes. And I was really trying to get to you because I had to pee. Oh. Okay. And then it, I took this new route. I ended up being later than what the original GPS, and I was so pissed off. So tense. So I think we all accept what for Samoba is the experience of catching yourself accepting that we naturally just drop into this thing that we are, we're thinking these things and we take responsibility for it and then we act a certain way and then we feel guilty and then we feel, and we're so convinced like, oh, I'm afraid to talk in front of people. I'm afraid of heights. You know, all these things that we've convinced ourselves over billions of interactions since we've been born. We just build up this, I know who I am, I know this, I know this, I'm thinking this way, I've always thought this way. But I would say for MOBA is the experience of getting under all that and realizing that our whole personality has been built up by this sort of goof of being responsible for our monkey mind who's just doing its job. Yeah. So <clears throat> tell me about some, some of the reasons why you got into mindfulness to begin with. When did this start in your life? I, well, it started early, but um, I always had sort of a low level of anxiety. And unfortunately, what some people go, oh, but you coped with it. And I did, but it changed my personality. It made me think that I was a certain way and that certain limits were always around me. Like, oh, I better not go skiing because the altitude gets me sick the first night. And so I don't avoid going and on and on and on and things like that. And then if I had worrying about something, uh, I wouldn't sleep very well. And then the next day I'd have a headache. So I had these belief systems that that's just the way it is. That's who I am. That's the way the world works. And so I was always looking for an escape, you know, some way to fix all that. And so I've always been interested in things like that. And, and, I just, and then I was always afraid, too, that I would see people who had similar things. I think it's sort of common, actually, to have anxiety about different things. Uh, then, but then people do some really radical things to cope with it. And mm -hmm. it's, a lot of it works. Like if you believe in astrology and your moon is in Sagittarius, 
You know? Sagittarius. Well, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. Yeah, well, and uh, then it's all programmed and, you know, you just float along. You don't have to be responsible for anything. So I've seen people, I think religion's that way, and I think most belief systems are that way. And I always, I never, for whatever reason, thought, oh my God, that's the biggest trap in the world. Were your parents religious at all? Um, my grandparents were very religious, and my mom was a little bit religious. My dad never was. But about 30, when she was 30, four, 30 years old, when I was born, mm -hmm. uh, she started slipping way out of it. So, so really, you were raised pretty... Non-religious. Non-religious. As well as I was. Yeah. You, you and mom raised me. We would go to church once a year and, you know, for Christmas, just for the whole, the please in-laws and the pageantry of the whole Christmas feel. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was a sort of a joke, but I don't know. It just seemed like, I get, the, it serves a great purpose though, so I guess it's not a joke, it's the end and justifies the means, I guess, so. Well, it, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm free to share my honest opinion on organized religion. It's not the type of show where I feel like I want to be buttoned up and you need to be afraid not to offend anyone, but I feel like it's a rarity. I grew up with no religion in my life, but then every friend I... Your dad I, an asshole? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then every friend I met has ha, was, did grow up with some sort of uh -huh. faith and some sort of routine in their family surrounding faith. So I'm not sure how rare it is, but I feel like I'm one of the oh. only people I know who wasn't raised under a certain yeah, faith a, or religion. It always surprises me how many uh, people who are religious that don't act that way. Mm -hmm. But obviously it's a very powerful idea and, you know, you can... Uh, that's just not what I have found. Uh, the experience. I want to reiterate this over and over because the minute you get in your head and you try to do MOBA in your head, mm -hmm. it really doesn't work. You have to experience catching yourself, your brain going off, and experience it like, oh, it feels like me. And normally I would just go down this tunnel like I just had this thought. MOBA is the experience of recognizing that and then whatever happens is interesting. And so that's it's what I do. Third, it's like a third person awareness. Yeah, I hate that third person just because it brings up other things. But I would just right. say the least you can say about it, just the experience your brain doing things and experience it typically without normally looking at it, you would think it's yourself doing it. So it's the experience of catching that and telling yourself that's not me. That's the spot, the experience where I want to land all the time. Can you pinpoint the moment in time when you first were able to experience that? I actually can. Uh, <clears throat> I read a book and it was a, uh, <clears throat> it was a sort of a spiritual book and this guy had me do these exercises and it's a common practice where um, you they say okay who's who's Bob look why don't you close your eyes and look inside and tell me where Bob is and see if you can find him and they have this no head exercise and anyways this guy was wrote this little book it's like two hours long and um, I was doing these little exercises and he's very clear about the level of how you do do this until you experience that and then go to this next. Anyways, I read this book in about two and a half hours and all of a sudden I got in this unbelievable, funny, relaxed state of mind where the monkey mind was still going off, but instead of being like inside my head, it was like over here. And I just sat there and thought, what is going on here? And uh, that's when I really got, oh, I got separated. Somehow I got a little teeny space. Mm -hmm. It's nothing's space. changed. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. It's still, my mind was still doing all whatever. Oh my God, is that someone on the phone? Oh my God, is someone walked by the window? Oh my God, is, oh, did I turn the TV off? Oh my, did I, oh, the chicken's dry. Should I throw it out? 
you know, what, uh, you've got all this worrying. shit. Yeah, all just, I don't want to call it worrying because a lot of people go, I don't worry. It's just um, doing its job, analyzing things, mm -hmm. you know. Analyzing things. Yeah. Worrying is one little aspect, or one aspect of it, but it's, I'm talking about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It analyzes everything. Mm -hmm. It compartmentalizes everything. It, you know, and it looks around and all that. Yeah. And so somehow I got a little from this exercise of looking for yourself and all this, and he has a few other little techniques, uh, but I found I shift. I all of a sudden had the perspective, I'm not my mind, I'm the awareness of my mind. Isn't it crazy how that voice in your head is so, it can really overpower your experience of in-person life. Like you could oh. be driving and just thinking and not, you're not even looking at what you're seeing, you're not experiencing anything that's happening in front of you, you're paying attention to this voice. I think it's job. The, th the thing I really found out the most interesting, I've been doing this every 10 minutes for the last four years, is how relentless the mind is and how clever it is. It figures out real quick what you're doing. Oh, you think you're going to shift out of me? Mm -hmm. Okay, take a fucking toothache. Mm -hmm. Hey, asshole. Feel bad about yourself. You're cold. You're this. You're that. I mean, it is so wickedly clever about owning. Its job is to make you feel like that's you mm -hmm. because that's what will make you safe. So there is no plain nice. You can't go, oh, brain, I love you. Would you love me? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go and look at the clouds. <laughs> It's, you know, it doesn't play that way. It plays, let's get, oh, the asshole's about to shift out of me. No, 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 no. I'm going to fucking spark him up. I'm going to roll him around with his ego, all sorts of shit. Let's talk about the ego. I wanted to ask you that. So in, in the traditionally, or I, not traditionally, mm -hmm. I want to say in America, in the regular American, they hear the word ego means someone who's full of themselves, that's someone no. who has a big ego. Someone who has a big ego is someone who's overly prideful and they're, they're egotistical is that word. But ego in traditional sense is the part of the brain that has to look out for things. It's responsible for fear and it's responsible for desire. It's basically responsible so that you're not content right in the present moment. Yeah. It's always looking in the past or the future to get something, to change something, to worry about something or to desire something else. So that's what the ego really is. Yeah. Well, I think the ego is a 100% accurate sort of description of what I call the monkey mind. And uh, you said something that I should have said a few times is the MOBA thing, when you do that little exercise or awareness technique, you get present. And so that was one of the sort of takeaways I didn't really want to say, but what happens when I shift is you get real present. You sort of knock out that voice that wants to project into the future or look into the past. That's the job of the monkey mind or the ego or the brain or whatever you want to call it and that's what I'm trying to avoid is but not to, to you know this is the tricky thing not to try to s change it at all not to stop it at all I always encourage it oh that's what you got give me a little more mm -hmm. you know and he's clever or it's clever it it will do anything to keep you um, connected mm -hmm. it wants to be you its job is, hey, this don't let this guy get figure this out because this he won't be safe. He'll be a loser. He won't get up and go to work. You know all that. That's <laughs> it's all if, survival mechanism. Yeah, it's, it's just totally built into us. Mm -hmm. But I, instead of saying this is a bad thing, I say it's the perfect thing because it's so relentless. You don't need a teacher. It's going to wreck every minute of your life. It's going to say. Hey, hey, 
hey, hey, are you enjoying everything? Are you present? <laughs> and that's what I hear instead of, it's trying to say, hey, hey, your daughter's trying to mooch money off you. Yeah. And I go, oh my God, that's the ego. That's, uh, oh, yeah. thank you for yeah. reminding me to go, oh, fuck, life's perfect. It's a miracle. Yeah. So that's what MOBA is, is shifting to the miracle using the ego or monkey mind as so a do concert you, room. Do you, is there anything that you do, like maybe playing the guitar mm -hmm. or sleeping, just... Is there anything that you do to quiet the mind where you actually don't have to deal with it for just a period of time? I do a lot of things like that. I like to float in the tank <clears throat> and I do this weird little meditation that sort of is very common. With when you're floating in the tank, you're, you're able to quiet the mind? Are you kidding Oh, me? yeah. It, no. Oh, wait, wait. Let's... You have nothing to distract you. No, no, no. Oh, no. It's worse. You don't quiet the mind, first of all. It's not possible because it's not you. See, that's a fallacy right there when you say, oh, you're going to quiet your mind. That's already made the connection. That's me. Mm -hmm. So there is no quieting it. Mm -hmm. There is just detaching a little bit and recognizing what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that will get you present mm -hmm. and very quiet. Mm -hmm. So that's the main technique. Mm -hmm. But in the tank... It's just the opposite. If you're sitting here and you got the guitar and you hear all this noise and everything's going on, your foot itches and you feel this heat, then your mind's dancing and all that. But when you sit in a sensory deprivation tank, all that goes away mm -hmm. and all you have is the monkey mind. Oh, oh you, God damn it, Bob. Why are you laying here wasting all this time? As soon as you get out, you got to put air in the tire and then you got to <laughs> go over here and that little brat wants to borrow money. I know she does. <laughs> I know, uh, but that's how I think. Yeah. I mean, it does occur to me, not so much exactly that, but right. whatever. Every kind of She wants problem. me to feed her, you know, why does, you know, yeah. she wants me to cook for her. Well, I want to go walking and look at the seagulls or whatever. I don't want you to cook I for know. me. Don't worry. That, I brought my own snacks. I know, but that's what, <laughs> so anyways, that's what I do. I use the uh, recognition of what's going on in my brain as the tool to shift to get relaxed mm -hmm. and to feel the miracle and then when you start to shift a little bit and the monkey mind isn't right there and it hates it by the way mm -hmm. that's the most interesting thing about all this mm -hmm. is it plays for keeps and it doesn't let up the more you shift the more it goes, oh fuck, double down. Mm -hmm. Let's kill his cat, or let's <laughs> let's give him can't. No, you know any crazy thing it can think of, it wants. Whether it's like, oh, let's do something to absorb him so he's not aware. Because um, most of us, walk, and I think there's a look in people's eyes when I'm around people who are shifting, who aren't bought into the ego. They have sort of a more relaxed look, a little presence, their, their presence to the moment. Mm -hmm. I get that right away with people. Mm. And it's just not taking this box that we have in our head seriously. Or you, I take it seriously, dead serious, but I don't take it that it's me. Mm -hmm. That's just shifting out of having the awareness that that's not you and using that experience and you'll get relaxed and sort of feel the miracle of being alive mm -hmm. naturally there's nothing to do about it there's no truth i don't know what the truth is this isn't the truth it's just a way to be mm -hmm. and uh, i found it very interesting it's very powerful in a very funny subtle level and the more i do it the more it cracks me up How's I watch myself, and believe me, I'm not that good at it. One thing can happen at work or in my social life, and I get caught for four hours. Four fucking hours, and then something will happen, I'll go, oh my God. I was... Oh my God, I just had a rain. I, I was like sleepwalking. Yeah, I was just sleepwalking. That's a yeah. great way to say it. I was just like so attached to my ego and yeah. my brain, 
about figuring out why the light shorted out and whatever. Uh, and I get caught all the time. It's mm -hmm. wicked, and it knows what, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, that kind of stuff is real edgy money, uh, ego stuff. Oh, I want a big house. I want to live by the beach. I want to, I want to be good looking. I want to, blah, 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 blah. It loves that shit. Oh, yeah. And I'm weak. And it knows. It's like reading. <laughs> it knows. It won't stop till it gets a hold of you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And once it gets a hold of you, then it goes for a nice ride. He takes it a little different. Mm -hmm. But the minute, the second you go, hey, oh, fuck. You got me again. Damn it. <laughs> he goes, mm, okay, switch. <laughs> it, it doesn't like at first, mm -hmm. you know. You don't have a name for your... No, I should think of that. But as monkey point. mind monkey is kind mind, of what yeah. you call it. Monkey mind comes from the idea that apes or uh, prehistoric humans, before we were humans, we were apes, and the monkeys were sort of, they had this primitive brain. Yeah. And so that's where the monkey mind yeah, just, comes from. We have a print. But know. there's a book called The Monkey Mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's now. Yeah. But that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not perfect. It's a messy, but life's messy. Yeah, tell me some more life messy things. One of the... I know oh, my favorite story of yours. But what is that? Probably the farting one. Oh, gosh. But go ahead. No, I have many things... Um, one, one of the things that I've done for long, the last three or four years is, and I don't know how it got this way, but I notice when I make fun of myself and do something really stupid, it totally puts all that ego stuff in its place, sort of, and I get real present. Like, one day, I don't even know what it happened, actually, actually, I was sitting in a restaurant with this girl, and everything is sort of nice. But then I realized, oh, you know, maybe this over there. And, oh, God, they got better pancakes. And, what girl is this? Well, I don't know. What, that's not important. Well, I'm just saying I was getting into that whole ego thing, uh -huh. right? And uh, <laughs> so all of a sudden I realized a truck in the parking lot had backed up and went beep, 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 beep. Uh -huh. and, and there's a lot of people right around me. And I looked around and I saw got real stiff and I said, Bobby doesn't like the noise. <laughs> and everybody looked at me like, oh my God, he's on the, and I realized I did that for a reason. It just totally took away my connection with the ego, just broke it apart. Mm -hmm. All the, you know, I have a, a disease called looking good. Mm, looking good disease. Yeah, yeah, I won't, you know, and that, uh, I have a good dose of that. And so I do things to make, to just kill that. You know, how can you look good after you stood up in a restaurant and said, Bobby doesn't like the noise. <laughs> did you do that consciously or did yes. it just almost no, I, I, come through you and well, then you came like, through. oh wait, whoa, what did I just I do? I was sitting there thinking, you know, Bob, you're wrecking the afternoon. It's perfect. You're with this beautiful girl. You got pancakes, you got this, and all you can think about how things should be better. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. and it was so disgusting. And I recognized right away, like, oh, my God, I've just gone for the last half an hour, lived in this other world. It totally had me. I was, didn't have any sense of anything but that. And then I just realized I heard the noise, and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> I should use that. And I s sat up. Bobby doesn't like the noise. And everything went away. What about when, when we had little Zelda? She was a tiny, oh. mini schnauzer, but she was very sweet. She wasn't even an aggressive dog. Schnauzers can be aggressive, but she was really small, and she was the sweetest thing, and you would take her for walks. Oh. <laughs> I kick her. <laughs> no, but no. the other people on the trail with big dogs. Oh, yeah. I would, uh, yeah, that was a funny one. The little, me and the little Zelda would be walking the trails, and the big dog would be coming at us, and we were going to pass. And right as we pass, I would say to Zelda, Oh, my God, you scared them. To, to be a good girl, girl, you really scared them. She wouldn't and bark she, a peep. She would not a peep. <laughs> and then people would think, We're not scared of you and the little dog, dumb <laughs> shit. So that's a similar sort of disconnect from the ego. Uh-huh. And so... I've been doing that for a long while. I've always 
realized for me how much the ego trapped me in all sorts of complete nonsense, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you were willing to fart on oh. a friend in a public restaurant. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, I was at a, going to a Coco's on the way to work. <laughs> I used to stop at this Coco's and order coffee to go and go take a pee. And I was coming out of the bathroom and I saw these four gentlemen sitting at the, a table and I recognized one of them as a colleague from another company. And I thought, oh, there's Eric. And I thought, <laughs> yeah. And then I had a little gas bubble. I thought, you know, it'd be funny if I walked behind Eric and stopped and got about six inches from the back of his head and <laughs> farted. Then I would walk real quick and turn and spin and go, I got you, Eric. And then, uh -huh. Because he wouldn't be expecting me to be at Coco's at six o'clock in the morning right. in Mission Viejo. But so I came out of the bathroom. I saw Eric. I got behind him, stopped, farted pretty loud too, and started walking away real quick and turned and spun and said, got, and I realized <laughs> that's not Eric. He looks like Eric, but it's not Eric. And that boy, that punched out all that. Yeah. That's yeah. so great. I think I have a little teeny bit of this too. It's it's like I know I have looking good disease, but I purposely fight it and just see how far I can push the envelope. My new thing is I've been doing this type of dancing called shuffle dancing, and I taught myself, so I'm not very good, and it's really fast, and it's difficult, and I look kind of silly when I do it, especially when I first started. My arms would go everywhere, and I look kind of dorky and ridiculous. <laughs> but I would still post videos of it. And I know there could be someone out there making fun of me or multiple people or people from my high school or whatever. Oh my God, that's the high school. You have a big oh, connection with that stuff. High school was interesting. Um, yeah, but I wanna know, I wanna know. One other thing that I noticed people do, this is sort of a, a flip side of some of this, but I noticed a lot of people mm -hmm. who sort of recognize some of it so they resist so they sort of recognize the nonsense thoughts mm -hmm. and then they try real hard to resist them and put them down and i think that uh, gets you in another type of box in trouble mm -hmm. but i notice that goes on when i look at people and i watch them their ego or whatever their head is you know and they're tied into it and they're going oh that's not me mm -hmm. you know and they push it down. Uh, I just use it as the recognition to become present. And for some reason that sort of shifts me into more of a, oh my God, what a trip that this is being alive. Do you feel like you have the ability to sense energies in a room or with people? Like when you walk into a room, do you are you observant or are you more like me where you want to be that way. You hear people talking about, oh, I can pick up on energies and I'm real observant of other people. But a lot of the time I'm stuck in my own thoughts and I'm distracted. So I'm not really attuned or paying attention I think that's as much a, as I wish I was. A great illustration of how much, just like you said, if I'm in my head and I'm all connected with the monkey mind, I don't have a fucking clue what's going on. Mm -hmm. But if I shift it out, that's all. Yeah, it's, it's almost like saying the wall is blue. You can say, oh, Sue's got a lot of anxiety. Fred is uh, drunk. Yeah, you're picking up I'm on it. I'm picking up on it. But it's just, to me, a function of, of how connected I am or not connected. Mm -hmm. Do you remember a certain age where you felt like, your anxiety that you described kind of got to a point where you were really starting to look into doing something about it? Yeah, oh yes, very much. It was junior college and I, I had this overall feeling of, God, this is a fucking waste of time. I don't see how I would ever use this education to make money or do anything. And I felt like a goofball, like, oh, I'm gonna get this four-year degree in liberal arts and I won't be able to get a job and it's just like sort of a joke and 
And I had a lot of anxiety about that. Mm -hmm. And I started getting headaches and depressed. And for me, that's a cycle. Then I wouldn't sleep so good. And then I rolled into it. And so I don't know what, I was reading some book and that's the, when I found this Rolfer. What's and that? A, a Rolfer is a uh, extreme massage. Oh. They take their elbows and uh, stretch. Instead of like a chiropractor will adjust your skeleton, mm -hmm. uh, a Rolfer will adjust your fascia. Your fascia. Fa fa fascia. And a, that sort of tunes you up. So he'll look uh -huh. at you and go, oh, your back's stiff here. Your gut's like this. So I'll lengthen this and shorten this part of you. Cool. And so... It's a really interesting thing. And that was the first time I really experimented. And it actually helped me a lot. And then you start catching on to, you know, hey, I'm my worst enemy. But what enemy. do you mean catching on? Because you, for me, yeah. you were the one that brought me to some education or some, some pieces of literature and some books and some things that I could start doing to learn about mindfulness. And you taught me about it yourself. But I don't know when I would have ever mm. picked up on that. Maybe in a yoga class, maybe, but I took plenty of yoga classes before I actually got it. It does, it's, it's weird. It's like it doesn't click until you've experienced it. You could listen to so mm. many spiritual people say, oh, mm -hmm. the mind, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, 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 sure. And you, you want to believe it, but you haven't experienced it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yes, I agree. And I would have to say, anytime someone gives me a compliment like that or something like that, I always think, yeah, because I was in so much fucking pain. Mm. <laughs> so it wasn't, I don't want to No, but so, so yeah. take me to the, the moment in time when you... So to me, most people don't... This is the most craziest thing. 99% of the public don't realize they've been duped. How... Do you know that stat? Or is that just something you Just do? something, my, yeah, I shouldn't. My observation. But I agree with you. I think yeah, that's My observation right is that the majority, vast majority of the people have no idea that they've been duped. Mm -hmm. And it's, society almost has this anti, you know, like if I tell religious people and other people what I do, a lot of people look at me like, oh my God, he's about to have a psychotic... <laughs> episode or something like <laughs> what are you talking about of course you're your brain of course i'm thinking my thoughts i mean so it's sort of a interesting i mean a, i catch myself questioning you know someone will ask me a question like why do you do that why do you do that thing that you do and i'll think about it and then i'll give them an answer and i'll go well i think i do this because i'm insecure about this and blah 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 blah, blah. but then i wonder do I really even know why I do anything mm. that I do? Or do I just think that I know? Maybe we're not controlling the mind. The mind's controlling us. And so we don't really know why we do anything yeah. that we do. Why try to answer that question? I totally agree. You're, yep, you're just playing right in his wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why is right in his wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. What about, what about ins insomnia? <clears throat> Yeah, something I'm ashamed of a little bit that you would think, oh, I've got, and this is where it gets goofy for me. It's like, oh, I have this sort of uh, insight to life. I shouldn't have any more problems. I should never right. get a headache. I should never have insomnia. Right. But it's not really that much better. Wow. You know, so I don't know what to think but about that. But that was one of, the, one of the things around your anxiety and your issues in life where you started to turn towards yes. these alternative ways of thinking or healing yeah. or whatever you want to call in, it. In my best moments, I'll think, oh, that was a great thing to have that I manifested so I could have those insights and I could get more real mm. and have compassion and empathy. Because mm -hmm. it will, when you don't sleep, for me at least, I mean, you get terribly uh, fascinated or... The only way out of it for me is, is to get connected with people mm -hmm. and have empathy and, you know, and, you know, the mind knows if you're trying to fake it, you mm -hmm. know, at least m m that's how it is for me. So I had great um, 
gifts from my problems. So it's sort of tricky to say, oh, this is a big problem, right. not sleeping, because it did bring me so many insights and maybe uh, a different way to be with people. And I have tremendous compassion for people that um, get thrown around by their minds. Mm -hmm. I know how tricky Panic it is. Panic attacks. Yeah. And I, I had that. And then more recently, two years ago, I started having real trouble falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And I called you up yep. and I said, I can't believe this is happening to me, but there are these nights when I almost won't sleep at all. I'll, I'll wait, I'll, it'll be four in the morning and I'll be still mm -hmm. awake. Like I know I haven't fallen asleep yet because I've been laying there thinking, worrying about whatever it is the next day. Mm -hmm. And then, and then worrying once you're worrying, and then you're worried that you're not falling asleep. And then you keep checking, am I asleep yet? Am I asleep yet? And it's kind of the same in your waking life with the monkey mind. I find myself always questioning, how do I feel? How do I feel? I'm looking for pain in yeah. my body. I'm looking for discomfort. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for stress. I have how to say it's scary when we talk because that's what I do. Oh. Oh, God. Hey, John. Hey, yep, see you, buddy. Anyways, so when I said I couldn't sleep, you said, wow. Yeah. I've had this problem but I never told you. And I felt so, um, I don't want to say offended, but I was really, it was a weird moment where I was like, do I really know my dad? Because mm -hmm. I felt like we were so close. And then there was this big thing that you'd never shared with me. And you said some things that, that really it's blew to this, my mind. To this day, even right now, I always think, I would remember being really happy and now I think you'll understand everything I'll, I'll say right now. Hmm. I remember very distinctly when you were about 15, 20 years old, I was watching. I think, oh, my God, thank God I didn't pass that on to her. Oh. Thank God. Because it was always like this really scary thing. I thought, oh, I, this is, I wouldn't want this to my worst enemy laying there. Especially when I would travel for meetings and business. It's called primary insomnia, where you can't fall asleep. And we don't we don't overconsume caffeine, and we don't neither of us do anything that would. And what's you would irritating? Think would lead to that. Uh, we'll do everything like oh, get the go to bed early and make all the room the dark and all, the sleep all that. Thing. Yeah, it's paradoxical intent. The harder yeah. you try, yep. the worse. It I is. have that one thousand percent. So I never thought you um, had it, mm -hmm. so I never really wanted it. I was always ashamed of it, and I would have periods of my life where maybe two or three years, maybe I was focused on my career and things were going well. I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. So you might have caught me when, when you were growing up. Maybe I didn't really have it. I was almost like, why should I even tell her? She'll, she's as goofy as I am, and she'll get in her head. It'll so, get in my head. Yeah, I actually... Probably it probably made, would have. I, I think three or four times my sense is I avoided telling you. Yeah. You didn't tell me until I told you. Yes. But then I told you. And, and it was the Because it started era. happening to me when I was 25. Oh, my God. Yeah. And See, I thought you were out it of it. It had happened a couple of times in my life before that, but just yeah. two or three times. Like one time in college. Wow. One time when I was out of college. Wow. But then it started happening consistently. And, oh, man, it is maddening, and it's, it's scary. It's so it's irritating. It's terrifying. Dude, I would feel sorry for myself for a month. Uh-huh. And you just feel helpless. And, and irritated at everyone else irritated. and jealous. Oh, my God. I used to hate your mom. <laughs> we would go someplace, and we'd get on an airplane, and I had to sleep for like 24 hours. And we get on the airplane, and I look over 10 minutes into it. She's snoring, and I would sit there for 11 hours. Oh, it breaks and I my heart. Just, it breaks my heart just to hear this yeah, thing. I know exactly. Oh, it's just the like and you, I would say. And nobody understands. Nobody understands. I used to tell God, just let me sleep, and I'll oh. give all my money to charity. He still wouldn't do it. Oh. Yeah, it was really. Um, 
Yeah. So it must be a genetic. I think so. Something tells me we both have busy brains. Something. I think it's even trickier than that. Mm -hmm. Because I can slow my brain down and play chess and read and, you know. So, so I, you know, I know other people that have had trouble sleeping. And it's not as uncommon as you would think, I think. No, one, no I, 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 it's a really common yeah, issue. Really I mean, common. I'm in the supplement industry yeah. and sleep supplements, oh, natural sleep aids are wildly popular, continue to grow in popularity. Yeah. It seems like everyone has trouble sleeping, but what I've always heard from other people is they fall asleep and then they wake up in the night and they can't go back to sleep mm. early in the morning. That's never been my problem. Mm. I can usually go back to sleep if I've woken up because I'm already kind of in this, the melatonin must be circulating. I'm, I'm kind of sleepy. I'm kind of dreamy. I, I'm still in that mood. I fall right back asleep, but it's the falling asleep sometimes. It's the weirdest thing. I'll be tired and then as soon as you get in bed, you're laying in bed, nope. I still have a bad practice. Now I'm listening to this app called, it's not even a sleeping app, it's just a, they read news stories. And I find myself, God, Bob, if you were just a little more creative with your monkey mind, you wouldn't need this. Mm. But I still like to listen to uh, news articles read, read to me, mm. and then I fall asleep without trying to. The minute I try to fall asleep, it still gets me. Why so is that I, a bad practice? Because I feel like, um, I guess it's not so bad, but it just feels like it's, I've given into it. Like, you know, I've sort of accepted that I have trouble falling asleep, so I do this. But I really think, God, I bet you there's, if I could re really get good at shifting out of the monkey mind, I could do it that way. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's sort of like a, a, a funny out. Yeah. Sort of funny. Well, I was coping thinking. Skill. I was thinking um, maybe you could try to play something on the guitar and sing a little song for my podcast, like Dose of Izzy. It could be the intro. It could be just a one-time thing, but I'd like to see what you come up with. Well, my favorite chord always is the minor ninths, mm -hmm. and that would be the Dose of Izzy. for sitting well, down thank you. talking with me. I'm sure glad you're my daughter. Oh, you're the sure only... glad you're my dad. Oh my God. I mean, aren't I lucky? Aren't I lucky? Yeah. I feel like I could go so much deeper with my dad, talk about so many other topics, but I'll have to save that for another episode. If you listened all the way through, leave me a review. Let me know who you'd like me to interview next, and I'll see you on the next show. Thank you so much for being here.